Hey everyone, so in this video we're going to be talking about what is considered a good GPA, and this is going to be particularly for students who are looking at graduate studies. So perhaps you're coming right out of your undergraduate degree, or you're doing some planning for the future, and you're trying to determine what is going to be the best GPA you can possibly get to position you well for graduate studies. Now obviously, uh, there's a couple of things that we want to talk about before we can actually get into the specific answer, and one of the biggest things is actually what we actually mean by GPA. Now when we say GPA, a lot of people assume that we refer refer to something called a CGPA, which re refers to a cumulative GPA, which is essentially the total courses that you've taken throughout the entire undergraduate studies and, and actually taking the average across all of those courses. So as an example, if you take 10 courses per year and you're taking courses for four years to get your undergraduate degree, then you would essentially have 40 courses. You would take the grades from each of the courses. So for example, 3.4 plus a 2.7 plus a 3.9, take all of those grades and divide them by 40 and that gives you your average GPA which is in other words referred to as your CGPA now of course if you're taking some additional courses outside of the program or after the program or if you're taking a little bit less courses depending on you know the type of degree that you're in or maybe even what country you're in then you would have a different number to actually divide by now depending on what country you're coming from as an example if you're coming from the United Kingdom or if you're coming from overseas um, you're going to have a different way to actually calculate your GPA as well. There's a lot of great resources online that will help you convert your GPA so that it's going to be uh, comparable to the 4.0 scale that we typically see in North America. Now, one other thing to consider is the fact that there are some programs and some universities who don't actually look at CGPA. So don't always make that assumption. It's always best for you to either contact the school or look at the admissions pages to see what is referred to specifically for the GPA so that you're not making assumptions in, in what you're actually looking for. So as an example, you might come across something called uh, upper year GPA, which sometimes will take the upper year courses only and kind of omit some of the, the courses that are taken in the first two years, or something called a major GPA, which is specifically uh, the, the relevant average for the courses that are taken um, that are pertinent to the specific field of study that somebody is actually coming from and applying to. Now this is going to be specific to some research programs that I've come across, although it is going to differ depending on the specific school that you're looking for um, and the specific program within that school as well too. So again, don't make any assumptions on that basis either. Another thing to really consider for professional degrees, and this is kind of a, a more of a situational thing, is there has been a lot of discussion online about whether or not a, high, or a lower GPA in a very highly quantitative field, as an example like engineering, uh, will actually be uh, equated to perhaps a higher GPA from something like the humanities or social sciences if you're looking at something like an MBA as an example. Now, there isn't anything kind of concrete in this respect. A lot of it is up to speculation as well too, but that is maybe something else to consider as well if you're applying to a completely different field of study uh, and perhaps just getting in touch with the school to see what their uh, specific regulations are in terms of that and whether or not they're actually going to view your GPA a little bit differently than they would from a more traditional candidate. Now, in terms of what is a, GP, a good GPA in general, of course you want to get the absolute best GPA that you possibly can get. And so, of course, as high as you can get uh, on the three above 3.0 essentially. So 3.7 and above would actually be even better if you can graduate summa cum laude. Uh, obviously that's that's what everyone wants to aim for. The purpose of this video is because of course if you fall within that category you probably don't need a video some, uh, you know, like this. Uh, but the purpose of this video is to actually refer you to what's a good scale to kind of look at. Like what's a good range uh, to determine whether or not you're actually going to be a compelling fit for graduate studies. And so a lot of schools will actually have a cutoff. And this is going to depend specifically on the rank of the school, where it's located, what the program is in general. Uh, but if we're going to make a huge generalization right now, let's just say for a lot of schools, it's a 3.0. And so they might say if you have a below a 3.0 GPA, either if it's cumulative GPA or upper year GPA or major GPA, sometimes they'll specify this. But again, you can ask if you're unsure, then that'll kind of set the bar as to whether or not they you might actually be a compelling fit for graduate studies at that particular institution. And so there are things you can do if you are hovering around this range um, and you want to make yourself even more compelling, or if you're a little bit below and you want to do everything that you can to kind of push yourself above the 3.0 range. Uh, and one of the great things that you can do there is to actually take additional courses outside of the degree. So maybe as a continuing education student, um, particularly that are, are relevant to the specific field of study that you're applying to, 
Institute. And so a lot of people, as an example, will take some math based courses if they're coming from the humanities or social sciences and they're applying to something like an MBA as an example. Um, but it's going to really depend on what you're coming from and what you're actually going into as well. But that's the great opportunity there as well. Now, this isn't necessarily going to uh, discount, you know, the previous undergraduate work that you've done, but particularly if you've been out of undergraduate studies for a little bit of time as well, then maybe this is a great way to supplement your GPA to show them something that's a little bit more recent. Also great in terms of reference letters if you have been out of undergraduate degrees for uh, a little bit of time. The other really awesome thing to think about is regardless of what your GPA is, you should always strive for the best that you possibly can, even if you know that you're targeting a program that just needs like a 3.0 to get in and it isn't very competitive. And one of the reasons for this is because of the fact that the higher GPA you have, the more opportunities you're going to open yourself up to in terms of some funding opportunities. So a lot of students are taking a lot of debt out in order to obtain an undergraduate degree. And so the last thing you need is to take on even more debt to be able to go to graduate studies. And so a great way to offset a lot of the costs that come along with this is to get a really high GPA have great reference letters, great admissions essays, and just do some of the extracurricular things that will allow you to get some external funding opportunities, whether that comes in the form of scholarships, bursaries, um, grants, whatever it happens to be, that'll make it even more um, you know, even more possible for you to not only obtain the degree, but also obtain it uh, with as little friction as possible uh, to you personally. So that's also something else to consider now for you to get into this range in a lot of cases, and unless there's other discretionary things to consider as well, uh, if you're going on academic merit alone, it, it is going to require you to probably be in the upper echelon of what the admissions ranges are. Now, a great way for you to determine whether or not you might actually qualify for certain programs is to actually contact the school and perhaps get a range of the GPA. So sometimes schools will have like a middle 80%. So they'll give you kind of like a range of most students will fall within, you know, the, these GPA ranges. And so you have an idea of where exactly you stand relative to the other people who are applying to that particular program. What I will say is don't necessarily discount yourself if you don't fall exactly where you want to within that range uh, because a lot of it really does depend on a lot of other factors particularly if the schools are, are looking at a holistic aspect of admissions so they're really grading GP as one element of the whole admissions decision they're looking at other factors as equally as they are to that as well. So that's also something else to consider and don't let that be a barrier to you to enter. So the overall TLDR of this is if you're looking to uh, get into some some really exclusive opportunities or to get some funding opportunities or to even put yourself within consideration for that, then obviously you want the best GPA you can strive for 3.7 uh, in overall, ideally, but particularly towards the field of study that you're hoping to get into. Um, if you're hovering around the 3.0 range, then you really need to dig deep and determine whether or not graduate st studies is actually going to be something that is going to be um, relevant to you, or if it's something that's going to actually provide you with the value that you're looking for in particular. Another thing you might look at is going overseas, perhaps, in into programs that might not have as rigorous of admissions. Um, standards of some programs that you're looking at domestically or the other thing is really just finding maybe some certificate or diploma opportunities that will not only help you get specific knowledge in that particular field of study but also perhaps might even enable you to improve your GPA so that you can be more competitive for some master's level programs in the future. So TLDR is try to be above the 3.0 range for you to even consider some of these programs uh, unless the particular program you're looking for specifically allows for students uh, who are going to have below a, a 3.0 GPA. Uh, but again, if you're looking to keep your options open, then that's probably a good benchmark to set. But of course, you want to get the highest GPA you possibly can. So I hope this video helped you. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, please leave them in the comment section below. I'd love to hear what you have to say. I'd also love to hear some video suggestions if you have any of those as well. And as always, thank you so much again for watching and we'll see you in the next one.